Hello. Happy Tuesday. I didn't get much done yesterday. Um, I got up very, very late and um, just in kind of one of those moods, you know, where you feel droopy. Nothing especially wrong. I wasn't ill or anything. I just felt droopy. So I really didn't do much until in the evening I got a little phone call saying that Gigi's daddy had to go to hospital. They thought there was something wrong. As it turns out, don't panic, there was nothing wrong. It's all sorted out now. Um, but because they didn't know how long they would be in hospital, at the hospital, sometimes our accident and emergency units can be quite some time. So I had a little Gigi. So we stayed up because... Uh, they were going to come back and pick him up, but uh, the time ticked on, the time ticked on, and I got a little message saying, would you mind keeping him? So I had my little treasure, and we slept. He sleeps on the bed next to me. He has his little bed on the bed, and then he sleeps next to me. But I can't show you him, because he's gone home now. Yeah. Well, what I got um, yesterday was, I don't know, if I told you I got some stickers, didn't I? You know, to put on my, um, when I'm parceling things up and that. Anyway, they, they, they turned out a bit sort of anemic, the other ones. They were just white with my name written on them. But these are actually a bit more colourful, aren't they? They're quite nice, I think. Just little tiny touches that make things a little bit better when you're parceling them up, you know. I'm not one of these who can do lovely, fancy, you know, tissue papered things and ribbons and bows. I'm not very good at that sort of thing. Uh, I did get up to the post office today. Uh, I didn't go yesterday because it was quite windy. It was uh, Hurricane Ophelia. It didn't really come through here. Uh, it's done a lot of damage in Ireland. Um, fortunately, not many people have been affected. I think three or four people have been killed, I think. But um, that's mostly been falling trees. That's sort of one, well, one falling tree hit a car and something like that, you know. But it's done damage, but fortunately for us, it went across the edge of us. And we just really got a high wind. We didn't get a hurricane, we just got a high wind. So I had to keep going outside and trying to, you know, make sure my garden furniture stayed in the garden. But apart from that, all was well. Well, what have I got to show you? Well, I told you I was going to send these magazines off down to um, Karen but I never got around to cutting the bits out that uh, I was using so like even though I was going to the post office um, I never sent them <laughs> now I'm not sure which bit came with which now so you'll have to forgive me because um, it came one of them came with the festival armor kit which if you follow Karen, which is casualistic, you know she likes doing amigurumis. So there you are, Karen. You can have a llama for Christmas. Um, there's also with one of them, again, I don't remember which magazine. It's called Toft. Uh, Toft do a lot of soft toys and different things. Um, uh, they do patterns for that. They also do like lovely colours of wool, of course, but little expensive sorry if you're a fan of Toft but we've got Lincoln the Bactrian camel if you can see him because he's rather brown and it's dark and once again I'm filming about nine o'clock in the evening because I've had Gigi all day um, and my ex-husband called I'll say the word <laughs> so that kind of put the mockers on things that one's called the Quill Shawl. I hope you're looking at these, Karen, because these are heading your way. Um, or if you don't want to look at them, look away, and then you won't be a surprise. Striped blanket, which although it's cute, I just don't do striped blankets. I have so many patterns and so many magazines that I decided to take a I'm going to take a razor blade, hopefully, this week sometime and take out all the toy patterns because I'm not going to use them. 
So it's such a shame, isn't it? You pay all that money for the magazine and then you don't use half the pattern. So I'm going to send them to someone who will. This is Ayoko the Monster. Oh, yeah, Ayaka, Ayako, whatever. Anyway, it's the monster. Doesn't look very monstrous to me. It actually looks like a monkey, but a monkey with long arms. <laughs> Who am I to know what these things are? Now this doesn't come in the magazine. This is just showing what the, you know, the patterns are that they do uh, from this toft. Quite cute. There you are. You can make a crown for you and Kel <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> Wear your party hat. And there's the treble ribbed beanie. That's probably the only thing I would make out of this magazine, but I've actually got quite a few hat pans, so I'm not destroying. Well, it's actually not the magazine, it's the Amex bit that came with it. That's a Tunisian striped cowl. But again, I'm not sure which book it came with. Maybe it'll, when I start looking at the books, it'll tell me. And crisscross scar. And what else have we got? A Christmas cracker. Now these appear to be just the clothes. So whether they imagine that you've already bought the book that's got the sort of animals in or whatever they call them, people. Uh, this is actually just the king costume. So I suppose you could adapt it to fit on something else, you know, really, a doll or something. Um, and we've got a baby's pixie set. And that says how to read a toft pattern. So I'm sure, Karen, you know how to read a pattern. Uh, again, one of the magazines came with the Axbridge Afghan, which is very, very sweet, but I don't do Afghans. I suppose you could make it smaller, make it into a pram blanket or something. It's quite pretty. Right, let me see what this one says. Crochet now. Does that say it's got anything with it? We'll start with crochet now. This might have been the one that came with that toft, um, another free booklet, I think, maybe. I have the brains of a flea. I told you that before, don't I? But I do have the brains of a flea. Right, well, we'll skip over what's new and all the showers and everything like that, and we'll get to the main deal, which is the patterns. That one's called the Aminta Wrap. It's actually on the front cover as well. I'm not sure if it's reversible or whether it's just, uh, oh it is. It uses a reversible double layer stitch to keep you cosy on chilly winter days. Um, that's a dinosaur backpack. What else have we got here? Oh, they, that's just designer sketchbook. That's just, you know, like an article about somebody. It's not in the, you know, the patterns are not in the magazine. Those are quite cute for Christmas trees, Christmas baubles. I've seen those somewhere else, though. I'm not sure where. Maybe I've got them in a book somewhere. Uh, Boston Ivy Shawl. Once again, um, I might make that, but I've got so many shawls, very, very similar, so I'm not going to take this out of the magazine. And that says it's a birdie. I don't know why it's called it's a birdie. Unless they mean it looks a bit like a golfing jumper. And Flora the Sausage Dog. There you go, Flora. That's an autumn blanket. So 
unusual, isn't it? Like with leaves down it. But I wouldn't do it so. No point to be keeping it. Hot water bottle cover. I don't use a hot water bottle. I use those, um, you know, the things with beans in that you warm up in the microwave. Because they sort of stay at your body temperature, they don't go icy cold like a hot water bottle does. Oh, that's showing you how to do the, you know, the reversible crochet that's in that, um, in the bolero or shrug or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't think uh, Gigi would appreciate me making him one of those. It's a regal dog jumper. What else have we got in here? Herbert the Sheep tissue box cover. My tissues are not that shape anyway, so... I buy the big economy boxes. Because I use tissues for everything. Right, what else have we got? Anything else in here? Oh, Hedgehog Shower Scrubby. So that's a useful sort of toy. It's a scrubby. You could use it as a toy though. If your child took a fancy to it. T-shirt yarn bag. I'm just too lazy to chop up any old T-shirts. I'll just take them all to the charity shop. My t-shirts are every other colour under the sun, so they wouldn't go together anyway. Street Smart, that's quite cute, isn't it, that hat? Or beret. Barrette, as my grandma... No, was it? Not my grandma. My aunt used to call him a barrette. She said, no, it's a beret, it's French. No, it's a barrette. Call it what you want. It's a barrette. Family blanket. Ripple hat and cowl. Whoops. Tunisian sampler scarf. I thought it's alright if you want to practice your Tunisian. I've never really got into the tuners. They sort of can't do it. It just kind of doesn't appeal. I don't know why. It tends to curl up when I do anything. I mean, I was watching the cosy, what's you call the cosy crochet corner. She's been doing some. Um, Tunisian um, dishcloths. So I might manage a dishcloth one day. Moroccan cushion. Uh -huh. Cozy living. Oh, it's a Tunisian. It says Tunisian cushion cover. Oh, yeah, and a, and a blanket. Not sure whether the blanket's in Tunisia. Looks fairly chunky, doesn't it? I hope you've seen these. I hope you're not just getting glare. And that seems to be it. It for that. Now this one, I will be taking out the sweater pattern. Because I do like the sweater pattern. The rest of the magazine. Mm -hmm. But I like the sweater pattern. There we are. Christmas trees. You've got to have cork, I think. I think the corks are bits of wood or something at the bottom. So you'd have to be handy with the saw, wouldn't you, to do that? Um, a lot of adverts in this one. There we go, we've got frosty reception. There's uh, like for tea light holders. And those are Again, Christmas tree baubles. There you've got the Christmas trees again, and then a the, the string of um, bells. I presume you do them in very fine cotton and stiffen them in some way or another. Then you've got a rather pretty wreath and some baskets again that you would probably have to starch different or whatever you have to do with them to make them stand up like that
I'll just all the patterns for that. That's the pattern for the... They do this, they give you the llama kit like that but then if you gave that to somebody they wouldn't be able to make it because the pattern's actually in the magazine but don't worry you'll be getting the magazine um, this is what I will be taking out because I do like that but it doesn't affect anything of the patterns in the book except you know the pages to do with that so that's the only one I like and I would probably maybe do We've got a little tutu for a little girl. It's a net at the bottom. Or tulle, whatever you want to call it. I think it's netting, isn't it? And a crochet bodice. If you're into Christmas sweaters, you can have a gingerbread man. I don't I hope we're not doing Christmas sweaters this year because we're actually going out for Christmas dinner. Now that is very pretty. Uh, that's very nice, Carol, if you like that little angel. It's sweet, isn't it? Uh, I mean, my ex said to me today, why don't you start making little toy things? They're popular. I said, no. <laughs> so I've got friends who love to make them. But myself... That one I think is some kind of um, Christmas calendar, you know, the countdown to Christmas. At least they've given me plenty of time. They usually put things like that in the Christmas edition, don't they? And you haven't got time to do them. And that's uh, another sort of bunting or whatever you want to call it. Garland, whatever. Not sure what it's meant to be. Well, it's meant to be Christmas baubles. Oh, you see, I like that, but of course that isn't in the book. It's just an advert for a pattern. <laughs> Trust me to be awkward. And then you can either have um, like a Santa Claus hat or a, a cowl. I should have said the first, I think I showed you the first magazine was called Crochet Now. And this one is Simply Crochet. And it's the issue 63. This is the one we're looking at now. They're just showing you how to do tulip stitch. It's not attached to a pattern, I don't think. It's just tulip stitch. Oh, it is attached to a pattern, I beg your pardon. It's attached to a throw, afghan, whatever you want to call them. Large pram brook. <laughs> Lap gap. Um... This is just an article talking about the Christmas countdown. I don't really get into the Christmas mood and spirit these days. I used to when, you know, my son was small. You do, don't you? But kind of goes off you when you get to my age. It's not the same thrill. I put the tree up. That's about what I do do, but that's about all I do. Um, tiny dancer there, just like little ballerinas all over her. Little throw, pram blanket, whatever it is. I'm not sure what it is. Doesn't exactly say, does it? Oh, bubblegum blanket, he says. It's probably for this bubblegum pink. Uh, just an article on new yarns, super chunky yarns. They're usually super chunky prices too. And there's a nice little thing that if I was into Amiguru was talking about how to join the things together. Which is another thing that I can't do. I'll tell you the other thing on one side. Oh, and you get the little pattern as well for Ellie. Or L. L the elf. As I say, very, very cute. But will I do them? No. I'd rather have teeth pulled out. It's your thing, don't get me wrong. It's your thing. <laughs> and enjoy it. I <laughs> um, think that's about it now. There's usually a page where it tells you what's going to be in the next month. Oh, it's also got a, a mandala or some description. Oh, 
Oh, that's in next issue. A cape and a hat, and I presume there's more toys. Oh, yes, there is. Cute dolls and outfits. An exclusive Toft 218 calendar. Hmm. Maybe I'll buy it for the calendar. <laughs> Who knows? Well, I was lucky enough to... Um, see online at the right time there's a wool shop not too far from me which is in Blackpool if I had a car it wouldn't be that far and she's called Lowell's Little Wool Shack and she was advertising like sight unseen um, a box of mandala that was like oddments, uh, part balls whatever it was and it was £20 for the box sight unseen so I thought well go on then I'll have a do and I'm quite pleased it arrived this morning and those are the colours I should explain that she's sold out now so even if you go on she's still doing the mandala at a very reasonable price it's not a mandala as in uh, like a branded one like lion or anything like that because these are none of these have got labels on them but uh, I think they're quite nice colours I'm going to share some of these with Sue when she comes tomorrow well, she's coming tomorrow so she'll be able to tell you all about her holiday in Bonnie, Scotland. I mean, that one is says it's a Vogue with love. That's actually got a label on it. It's very, very pretty colours. I mean, there are only ones of them. So if I do a shawl, I would have to eat them out because I don't think it says on here how many. No, it doesn't even say how many grams are, are on it. I'd have to weigh it. But it definitely doesn't tell you how many yards are on it. Um, some of them are quite large, like this one again, it says Vogue on it. I mean, the reason why they're cheap is like they're all falling to bits or something like that, you know. But, um, you know, I could eke it out with, um, you know, pick one of the shades out of it and, you know, to make a, a well, one of these type of shawls, you know, that's in different colours. Because one, one obviously of this won't make a whole shawl. Um, some of them are bigger than others, and uh, you know, like some, some like that are kind of falling to bits a bit. <laughs> I don't care for that price. I mean, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that look like reasonably sized balls, and then there's four little ones so I don't but sorry to say you miss the boat kids um, I mean this one I absolutely love this one look at that vibrant colours in that <gasps> Sue's not having that one <laughs> sorry Sue if you're watching not having this one um, but there's some part balls that um, Sue's better at making you know more like um Cowls wraps and things like that because like these are little balls I mean they're only uh, well that one does say 100 gram but I don't think it's a full bowl and that one definitely isn't a full bowl but we'll, we'll see what she uh, what she can think of to do um, <laughs> that's like a little pyramid isn't it <laughs> but they're lovely colours I'm, I'm quite excited about they look like a double knit but probably a bit of a finish double knit but I'm quite excited to see what I can make with them or what Sue can make with them who knows who knows that colour isn't that lovely oh. these say they're called Vogue and it does say 100 grams on this one so they do feel like full balls these some don't feel full but she did sell them as, as that way it's not that they've not they've come on the not she sold them as oddments or part balls or you just got a box full you, you couldn't choose you just got a box so all in all I'm actually quite uh, quite uh, taken with that I think the only one that's a bit if for me is that one it's sort of got a white and a bit of grey and then it's just pink. There's not enough um, colour changes in that for me. 
I'm sure Sue can think of something to make for one of her grandchildren. You know, maybe it looks nicer when it's made up because it has got some grey flecks in it there. Maybe I'm the lining it. Maybe it will look better when it's made up. But like the ones I like are the bright colours and like that one, you know, bright colours. So I don't know whether you can get Vogue yarn with love. I don't know. I have put another order in, but obviously not for a mixed box like this. She's got some Mandala, don't know whose brand it is, and it's $2.50 um, a ball. So I'll see what that's like when it arrives. But then I'm, I've ordered like two of each colour of those. I think I've ordered four shades with two of each colour. So I'm going to have to get this crochet hook going like the clappers because I just haven't done anything. The hat's still in the same stage. <laughs> didn't get pulled back, didn't get started again, that's just where it is. I was nursing a dog last night. He decided he wanted to climb on my chest and go to sleep, so I can't resist him. He's such a cuddle bum. And of course, when we're not having him every day, you know, I thought, oh, great, I've got him all day. It's wonderful. <laughs> my ex went, what's that? <laughs> I just my baby. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> it's the best way of having a dog, actually. Um, I have him, and yet I don't have the responsibility, you know, like the vet bills or the walking. It's the best of best of both worlds, really, isn't it? You have the pleasure of a dog and the pleasure of holding him and stroking him and talking to him. And yet I don't have the responsibility, like I said, him to the vet and paying the bills if anything goes wrong with him. And also I don't have to walk him, which, you know, it's the big bugbear with me having a dog is because I couldn't walk them. Also the financial issues with having a dog and taking it to the vet. And every time you take it to the vet, they seem to be about £100, no matter what. You only get it to take it to get looked at, you know, and you're talking 50 quid before it goes over the doorstep. And either that or you have to buy these expensive insurance policies that you pay so much each week. <sighs> I think I'll just stay with borrowing Gigi. <laughs> oh, still, he'll be back. I'm sure he'll be back very soon. I still get him a couple of days a week, so that's nice. But instead of milly mollying about, or lolling about, as my mother used to say, I really should get... I'm worse when I've got nothing to make... Well, I say nothing to do, I've got loads to do. But, you know, nothing uh, constructive that I have to get up for or I have to do. Like, I'm going to the hospital or I'm going here. If it's that kind of a day, or if my niece is coming, and like tomorrow if Sue's coming, I'll get up and I'll do things. But when it's just me and not even Gigi, I'm just like, oh, well, I'll just do that in a bit. You know, I'll just do that in a little while. And then you look up and you think, oh, bloody neck, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. I haven't done anything yet. I'm really bad. I should organise myself, you know. I mean, I... I don't have a crochet business, even though I've got this and that. It's a hobby. And if I sell things, it's a bit of a paying hobby if I manage to sell a couple of things. Um, I could never do it as a, a, a job, you know. I don't know many people who actually make it pay enough money to be a job, you know, to give up work and do it full time. I'd starve. <laughs> slow crochet but I would honestly starve but with me it's just like a hobby but as I was saying to my ex today there's only so many things that I can make for myself and there's only so many things that I can wear and yet I get a lot of pleasure and enjoyment from actually making things and yes I know I could do things for charity yes I know but I'm on a budget you know and um I do enjoy just selling something now and again. All right, I don't make much money. Don't make money at all, really. But it's just the um, the sort of appreciation that you get when somebody buys something. It's like, oh, 
Somebody else likes what I've made. That's nice, you know. They've actually bought it. That's even better, you know. And it gives you such a boot. Well, it gives me. I don't know about anybody else. It gives me such a boost, you know, like, yay, I sold something. It might only be one thing in one month or two months, you know. I don't get uh, that many kind of sales. I don't sell little things, that's probably why. But, um, you know, when I do sell something, it's like, oh, hey, yay. <laughs> Somebody loves me out there. <laughs> well, tomorrow when Sue comes, she'll probably be telling you all about her Scottish holiday. Uh, apparently she had quite good weather, so she missed all the bad weather that we had down here. You know, the rain, continuous rain and the more rain. And what we're going to do is, when Christina came, she brought me some wadding. So I'm going to make... Um, well, I still haven't decided whether she's called Rebel or whether she's called Portly Portia. It's one of those two names she's going to be called, and I still haven't, I'm still deciding. And uh, I'm going to make, well, we are going to make her bigger. So that should be fun. Because she's actually got a black sweater, uh, well, a t-shirt that I bought with long sleeves. So I'm going to pad the arms, you know, sew the ends up and pad the arms. So at least she'll be like, you know, Incredible Hulk standing there like that. Because I took pictures of her wearing the cardigan that we can't decide is beige or whether it's grey. I just wouldn't put it on Etsy. It just does not look appealing. It just looks like, you know, it's hanging there like... Mm. And I'm thinking, well, if a, if a plus size lady thinks she's going to look like that, wearing it, you know. And I know you could say put it on me, but I... I can't press the trigger of the... I haven't got a remote control thing in. I've never worked out on the um, camera. Oh, here we go. Fireworks again. What's wrong with everybody? It was about this time. Last time they started, wasn't it? They're crazy. Thank goodness I don't have dogs here anymore. As I said, poor little Sky, when she was still alive she used to try and chase them you know yeah I don't know whether Ian will get another dog or not he's down to one dog at the moment but he says he won't but we'll see I've got a sneaking suspicion he will get another dog <laughs> there's something about having two of anything isn't there really you know they're companions for each other aren't they when you're not in but um you know, with all what was happening with their new baby, and well, not their new baby, their new grandbaby, and things like that, I think that they're just leaving it for the minute, you know, just keeping with Poppy. Yeah, so, I mean, I can cope with Poppy if ever she comes overnight. Like, I mean, I couldn't cope with her for a week or a fortnight because she needs a lot of walking, and I couldn't do that. But I can cope with Poppy, but two, two of them, they used to be too boisterous, and they used to start running about and being silly and tripping me up, you know. I mean, Sky was a beautiful dog. She was such a lovely temperament. I mean, people say, oh, Rottweiler, oh, I'm scared of it, scared of it, go away from it. But she was absolutely fabulous and she was great with the kids. They used to pull her ears and jump on her and do all sorts of things and she never bothered. Poppy's a little bit more skittish. Um, but she, she came to Ian via somebody else, you know. So she was about six months old or eight months old, I think, when they got her. But Sky, they had her from being, well, not newborn, obviously, because she didn't stay with her mum until she was about eight, ten weeks old or something like that. Um, but I think when you have them brand new, you can sort of mould them, can't you, you know, and train them the way you want them to be. And Sky was just a big, lovable, wants to sit on your knee kind of dog, you know. I know he misses her. He misses her. She was his baby, you know. Like Gigi's my baby. <laughs> but Gigi, I can hold Gigi, you know. But Sky was a different matter. When she wants to sit on my knee, you know, she was like, <laughs> and she was <laughs> huge. Before she was ill, I think she weighed about seven stone or something like that. So seven stone, like, leaning on you, you know, you're, like, going <laughs> to the side with her. <laughs> but I do miss her. She was an absolutely sweet dog. 
But, you know, as you know, I miss my Buster. I still think about him every now and again, you know. I open the drawer thing and I find his lead, you know, and his, you have a little, oh, my doggy. You know, but um, I couldn't keep him because he was in pain and he wasn't kind. So I'm looking forward very much so to Sue coming tomorrow. So I must actually charge the camera up. Otherwise, when Sue comes tomorrow, you won't see her <laughs> because the battery will be flat. I mean, my cameras are... I can't complain. It was a good bargain for what I paid for it, which was very little money, really, comparatively speaking, with lots of cameras. But um, it's an old camera now, and it doesn't hold its charge. But having said that, I'm not knocking it. It's a, it's a Canon. It's a Canon Ixus, I think it's called. And it's been a really good camera, and I still like the camera, and I'm not going to change it anytime soon. Um... I'm no good with anything that's got too many knobs and dials and stuff. The only thing that I need adjusting when my son comes in is um, the screen at the back goes off. So even if I was to put a mirror behind to see what you're seeing, it doesn't because it just, it must be on a screen saver or something and it just goes black at the back after a couple of, well not even a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, it just goes blanks out. And I also need something to take the date off because I've accidentally put the date on it. Which I don't really want when I'm taking photographs kind of for Etsy and things like that. I don't really want the date um, on them. Because like if they don't sell and I've still got them next year, I don't want people thinking, oh she made that last year, you know. Because <laughs> it could be a new customer who's looking at it couldn't it, and doesn't know it was been there since last year or something like that. So I don't want the date on it. I'm going to have to take the date off. This is where I miss uh, Kelly. Because she's the whiz with anything um, sort of technical. <laughs> so she would have done it for me. Or when I go to the crochet meetup in November. I get Zoe to do it for me if I remember. Because Zoe would find out why my screen's gone blank at the back. <laughs> And she'd take the date off because she just goes a bit like um, Kelly really. Kelly just goes whereas I'm like what does that mean? What does that do? Oh what have I done now? <laughs> and of course I've got the camera book somewhere in a safe place. Don't know where the safe place is. It's with everything else that's in a safe place because I buy lots of little gidget, gidgets gadgets and gizmos and I put them somewhere safe and they just vanish without trace <laughs> I don't know they've not gone anywhere because I live on my own and there's nobody else to move anything so I must hide things from myself Anyway, I'm going to go now and I'm going to charge this battery up ready for Sue coming tomorrow. And um, I hope she doesn't get blown away when she's here. And then we can both look at this wool, which I'm so pleased. It's such a bargain. £20 for all that. Sheesh. And then we can argue who has what. <laughs> she won't argue. She's just glad I give her for what I give her, really. Because she likes to crochet, and but she hasn't done any. She didn't do hardly any when she was in Scotland. She really let me down. Because um, she decided to go at the last minute, and um, her other half and his two or three fishing friends had decided to book a bed and breakfast instead of booking a cottage, which Sue prefers. Because when Sue has a cottage, um, you know, if she comes back earlier than they do when they're fishing. She just puts her feet up and like does the crocheting and stuff, but it's not the same in a bed and breakfast. Because with a bed and breakfast, what they were doing was they were going out for their evening meal and of course having a couple of drinks, you know, while and before they came back and then when they came back it was straight into bed. So she didn't get a crocheting out at all. I just think she wasn't trying. She could have found a hilltop somewhere, couldn't she? I'm gonna have words with her tomorrow. She could have pulled up, you know, somewhere and just admired the scenery and did a bit of grocery while she was there. 
Oh dear. Anyway, we'll see tomorrow which ones of these colours that uh, Sue actually likes and what she's got she can think of to make with what. Because I can only think of shawls, I can't think of anything else, but she might have different ideas. And of course Sue's shawls are always more magical than mine because she finds these lovely patterns on Pinterest that were on charts, you know, <laughs> that some Russian person's done. Or she'll find a Japanese chart, you know, and she'll fathom it out where I'm going, huh? What? I mean, don't get me wrong, I can follow a chart if it's in, if it's in English or American, you know, I can follow one then. But some of these others, these Russian ones, and I just get my mind boggled. It's because I'm older, isn't it? I mean, Sue's, what, 20 years younger than me? Well, perhaps not 20 years, but she's a heck of a lot younger than me. And her brain still works. <laughs> Where's mine's on a go slow? Right, I'm going to go charge this battery up and we'll see you hopefully tomorrow. So, bye for now and you'll see me getting up again. <laughs> Because that's what, the way I am. I'm wearing different beads today because would you believe I've broken three necklaces last week and the weekend. Three! I haven't broken any necklaces since I first started wearing them, which is about three, four years back. And I break through one week. I put it down to old age and fatigue. <laughs> I will re-thread them because one of them is my lovely beige one that looks like stones and I really love that one. So I've got to re-thread them, yeah. Right, I am going. So I've got me one of my tunics on. So I'm going to go now. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.